Hello, this is RJ Deacon, reading the Supreme Court of the United States Opinion Syllabus in Kemp v. United States, certiorari to the United States Court of Appeals for the 11th Circuit. Argued April 19th, 2022, decided June 13th, 2022. If you'd like to support the podcast, find the PayPal link in the show notes. Petitioner Dexter Kemp and seven co-defendants were convicted of various drug and gun crimes. The 11th Circuit consolidated their appeals and, in November of 2013, affirmed their convictions and sentences. In April of 2015, Kemp moved the district court to vacate his sentence under 28 U.S.C. Section 2255. The district court dismissed Kemp's motion as untimely because it was not filed within one year of the date on which his judgment of conviction became final. That's section 2255F1. Kemp did not appeal. Then, in June of 2018, Kemp sought to reopen his section 2255 proceedings under Federal Rule of Civil Procedure 60B, which authorizes a court to reopen a final judgment under certain enumerated circumstances. As relevant here, a party may seek relief within one year under Rule 60B1 based on mistake in a Inadvertence, surprise, or excusable neglect. A party may also seek relief within a reasonable time under Rule 60b-6 for any other reason that justifies relief. But relief under Rule 60b-6 is available only when the other grounds for relief specified in the Rules 60b-1 through 5 are inapplicable. Kemp's motion to reopen his Section 2255 proceedings invoked Rule 60b-6, but his motion sought reopening based on mistake covered by Rule 60b-1. Specifically, Kemp argued that the one-year limitations period on his 2255 motion did not begin to run until his co-defendants' rehearing petitions were denied in May of 2014, making his April 2015 motion timely. The 11th Circuit agreed with Kemp that his Section 2255 motion was timely, but concluded that because Kemp alleged judicial mistake, his Rule 60b motion fell under Rule 60b-1, was subject to Rule 60c's one-year limitation period, and was therefore untimely. The Supreme Court held... Um, The decision below is affirmed, and Justice Thomas delivered the opinion. The term mistake in Rule 60b-1 includes a judge's errors of law. Because Kemp's motion alleged such a legal error, it was cognizable under Rule 60b-1 and and untimely under Rule 60c's one-year limitation period. As a matter of text, structure, and history, a mistake under Rule 60b-1 includes a judge's errors of law. When the rule was adopted in 1938 and revised in 1946, the word mistake applied to any misconception, misunderstanding, or fault in opinion or judgment. That's um, Webster's New International Dictionary, 1383. Likewise, in its dictionary, 1195, uh, sorry, Black's Law Dictionary, uh, 1195, Oh, all right. I'm going to keep going. Um, So after Webster's New International Dictionary, likewise in its legal usage, mistake includes errors of law or fact. Um, And that's Black's Law Dictionary, 1195. Thus, regardless whether mistake in Rule 60b-1 carries its ordinary meaning or legal meaning, it includes a judge's mistakes of law. Rule 60b-1's drafters could have used language to connote a narrower understanding of mistake, yet they choose not to qualify that term. Similarly, the rules drafters could have excluded mistakes by judges from the rules reach. In fact, the rule used to read that way. When adopted in 1938, Rule 60b initially referred to his, i.e. a party's mistake, so judicial errors were not covered. The 1946 revision to the rule deleted the word his, thereby removing any limitation on whose mistakes could qualify. Neither the government 
nor Kemp offers a reason to depart from this reading of Rule 60b-1. The government contends that the term mistake encompasses only so-called obvious legal errors. This contention also held by several courts of appeals is unconvincing. None of the dictionaries from the time the rule was adopted and revised suggests this obviousness gloss. Nor does the text or history of the rule, or of Rule 60b-1, limit its reach only to flagrant cases that would have historically been corrected by courts sitting in equity. Finally, requiring courts to decide not only whether there was a mistake, but also whether that mistake was sufficiently obvious raises questions of administrability. Kemp's arguments for limiting Rule 60b-1 to non-judicial, non-legal errors are also unconvincing. He claims that Rule 60b-1's other grounds for relief, um, that is, inadvertence, surprise, and excusable neglect, involve exclusively non-legal, non-judicial errors, and thus mistake should be similarly limited. But courts have found that excusable neglect may involve legal error. See, for example, Lengahan versus PepsiCo. Um, and they have a similar history of granting relief based on judicial inadvertence. That's Larson versus Heritage Square Associates. Kemp arg argues that Rule 60's structure favors interpreting the term mistake narrowly to include only non-legal errors and the the court's contrary interpretation would create confusing overlap between Rule 60b-1 and relief available under other parts of Rule 60, not subject to Rule 60c's one-year limitations period. But the overlap, Kemp suggests, would exist even if mistake reached only factual errors. Courts of appeals have well-established tests for distinguishing between these rules. And should such overlap ever create an irreconcilable conflict, courts may then resort to ordinary interpretive rules to determine which rule to apply. As for Kemp's worry that the court's interpretation would allow parties to evade other time limits by, for example, repackaging a tardy motion under Rule 59E, the risk Kemp identifies would exist even under his own interpretation. And in any event, the alleged specter of litigation, gamesmanship, and strategic delay is overstated because a Rule 60b-1 motion, like all Rule 60b motions, must be made within a reasonable time. Finally, Kemp protests that this court's reading is inconsistent with the history of Rule 60b, but his argument is based on the mistaken notions that Rule 60b-1's list of grounds for reopening was understood to be a term of art when adopted, and that Rule 60b-6 alone was intended to afford relief for judicial legal errors that had previously been remedied by bills of review. The decision below is affirmed, and Justice Thomas delivered the opinion of the court in which Chief Justice Roberts and Justices Breyer, Alito, Sotomayor, Kagan, Kavanaugh, and Barrett joined. Justice Sotomayor filed a concurring opinion, and Justice Gorsuch filed a dissenting opinion. <laughs>